While in Arizona, the search for a missing 24-year-old geologist continues well into its fourth month. Daniel Robinson left work at the Arizona desert near the city of Buckeye on June 23rd, but has not been seen or heard from ever since. I'm joined now by David Robinson, Daniel's father. He's in Arizona where the search for Daniel continues. David, thank you so much for taking time to talk about your son. Of course, this is troubling for everybody. Tell us about Daniel, what he was like. Uh, give us as much information as you can about him so we can get a sense of, of who he is. Uh, thank you for having me on. Um, Daniel, he's a 24-year-old uh, geologist. Um, he graduated out of College of Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, upon graduating, he came out to uh, Arizona uh, to take his uh, final class uh, upon graduation um, in uh, Flagstaff. Uh, he was able to land a job straight out of college in um, uh, a job called Matrix uh, as a field geologist. He was out on his job um, at a work site out there in the remote area of the desert uh, with another uh, a gentleman from a different company uh, where he went missing. Um, he, he, uh, I was told that he drove off uh, from the work site and, and my son had never been seen again. However, his vehicle was found uh, on uh, July the 19th uh, by a rancher who was out there chasing his cattle. Um, that was some two to four miles away from the work site. Uh, we recovered that vehicle. Um, there's some questions um, about the vehicle, the, the state it was in, uh, some of the evidence that was there, uh, my son's clothing, for instance, all anything that he's wearing. Uh, but my son still remained missing. And uh, right now, I came out here from uh, Columbia, South Carolina, to make sure that uh, uh, my son has been uh, uh, searched for. And uh, to do that, I had to stop my own searches and uh, continue to do so. What do the police say? Well, um, initially, um, of course, I'm not really having too much um, uh, activity from the Buckeye Police Department. Um, uh, so far, they only did four searches in three months. I um, have done uh, nine searches uh, with volunteers. Uh, much as I get out of the Buckeye Police Department is, is very little. Um, just uh, waiting right now to see if I can get like the FBI involved um, because things are looking very suspicious and they're getting worse and worse by the day. Um, I still, like I said, it's three months out, and um, we haven't uh, have, have too much more coming from the Buckeye Police Department. So you feel like they're not doing enough? Not doing enough at all. Um, despite of the uh, petition that I have, despite of the um, uh, press uh, conference, uh, despite of the, the volunteers and the many people who uh, follow the case, um, asking for um, a little more to be done. Uh, very little has been done. So I'm going to keep pushing um, as, as you know, I'm his father. So of course, uh, it's my job um, to make sure my son um, has received all the justice he needs. But what about the media? Are you getting any help uh, from local media talking about your case? Well, um, hindsight now looking back, um, I understand uh, some of the reasoning uh, when people, um, especially people of color, uh, we feel like, um, you know, the sense of urgency is not there. Uh, we have to jump over hurdles and hoops just to uh, get media attention. Uh, it took me three months um, to get to this point. Um, that took a, many hours of no sleep, um, going on social media, um, uh, you know, just knocking on, not knocking on, passing out flyers, uh, to everything I can think of just to um, get my son's name put to put out there just enough uh, just to have um, uh, my searches uh, reach a little farther out. And I understand you've even hired your own private investigator? That's correct. Uh, his name is Mr. McGrath for Three Laws Investigations. Um, since he hired, since hiring uh, my investigator on, uh, we found a lot of things about that vehicle um, that would raise a lot of questions. For instance, the vehicle being wrecked multiple times. Um, my son's uh, vehicle was first crashed four hours after he went missing. Um, and it was driven, like I said, uh, several miles after the initial crash. Um, you know, just things like that. Um, it's, it's more, you know, things like this. The, my son's sock was found um, a few feet, uh, a few distance away from where he was last um, uh, seen. And uh, the other sock was in the evidence bags that the Buckeye police uh, recovered from the scene of the um, vehicle uh, some months, uh, some weeks later. So, you know, things like that is very suspicious. 
um, trying to get the Buckeye Police Department to upgrade uh, my son's uh, missing uh, case into at least a possible homicide or possible criminal. Something that would give them, them the reason to do warrants and things like that uh, and really increase their search. But as it stands for now, um, they're not even moving at all. Now, is it true that there are reports that uh, Daniel showed some odd behavior in the days before he disappeared? Yeah, there's a lot of rumors out there. Um, and, you know, as a family member and as his father, um, I dismissed those rumors. Um, they're not totally accurate. Um, just like any other person, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm down about my son is missing. Uh, my son possibly would have had some things going on where it wasn't as that he was depressed where he would try to do something to himself or uh, he somehow disappeared from his family. Uh, he was having a bad day. Uh, bad days don't mean that you're depressed or and you want to kill yourself or something or uh, run out from your family. So I just miss a lot of those rumors that's out there. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of character assassination coming out of the Buckeye Police Department. Yeah, it's unfortunate people get judged uh, when something happens uh, before people just automatically want to try and help them. But thank you so much for joining us, and we certainly hope that you find your son.